The world of space exploration is witnessing history in the making. Located in Boca Chica, Texas, SpaceX's development site, Starbase, is buzzing with anticipation. The full stack of Ship 25 and Booster 9 instills hope of witnessing the gigantic rocket's imminent liftoff. This same sense of excitement enveloped the community just a month ago, when the rocket was first stacked following its initial launch in four months. However, that enthusiasm took a hit when the FAA denied the launch license necessitating the destacking of the rocket. But now, the atmosphere is charged once again, with the launch date appearing to be just around the corner. Most recently, SpaceX conducted the first full-stack test of Booster 9 and Ship 25 in preparation for the launch. We'll be diving into the details of this test and discussing the expected launch date in this video. But before we delve deeper, ensure you're subscribed to our channel for the latest on Starship updates. SpaceX's recent test is not as straightforward as it might sound. Remember, we're talking about the largest rocket ever constructed. The booster, Super Heavy, itself stands at an astounding 70 meters tall, while the Starship matches its enormity at 50 meters tall, weighing in at a colossal 85 tons when empty. So, before even beginning the test, imagine the monumental challenge. SpaceX engineers and technicians had to meticulously stack these two gigantic pieces atop one another. This wasn't done in one go. On four separate occasions, they embarked on this intricate task. Even after the monumental task of fully stacking the rocket, SpaceX didn't rush into the much-anticipated wet dress rehearsal. The emergence of white smoke from the liquid oxygen subcooler was the first sign that things were in motion. Following this, the Starship's main tanks were gradually filled with their two primary cryogens, liquid oxygen and liquid methane. Historically, other rockets like the Saturn V or the Space Shuttle underwent similar fueling procedures, but the scale and complexity for the Starship were unmatched. Following the initial steps, Booster 9 displayed a noticeable layer of frost. This visual change on the booster was a clear sign that the temperatures inside had dropped significantly, reaching levels between minus 60 to minus 20 degrees Celsius. Such a temperature drop is crucial for the stability and effectiveness of the cryogenic fuels being used. The physics of how the Starship manages temperature is truly captivating and marks a deviation from the traditional designs used in many rockets. For context, including the Saturn V and the Space Shuttle, employed insulation or even foam to manage the extreme cold of cryogenic fuels and to prevent ice buildup which could potentially become a hazard during liftoff. However, SpaceX's approach with the Starship is different. The Starship's steel tanks, unlike its predecessors, are intentionally designed without insulation. When these tanks come in contact with cryogenic liquids like liquid oxygen and methane, they experience rapid cooling. This not only allows the tanks to contain the cold cryogens efficiently, but also leads to an interesting phenomenon on the outside. The extreme cold temperature causes moisture in the atmosphere to condense and freeze on the ship's surface, resulting in a visible layer of frost or sometimes even thicker ice. This is not merely an aesthetic effect. It's a vivid demonstration of the stark temperature difference between the interior and exterior of the ship. Now, another aspect where the Starship design stands out is in its approach to managing the gas state of cryogenic fuels. As these cryogenic liquids react with the warmer ambient temperature outside, they tend to expand and transition into a gaseous state. In many rockets, this could pose a challenge to maintain optimal pressure inside the tanks. But Starship is adeptly designed to vent out this excess gas periodically, ensuring that the internal pressure remains within the desired limits. The reason SpaceX chose this approach is multifaceted. Primarily, a steel structure without insulation is inherently more robust and reduces complexities related to foam shedding or insulation breakdowns. Secondly, by allowing the natural formation of frost or ice, SpaceX can avoid using additional materials or systems to manage tank temperatures, simplifying the design and potentially reducing costs. SpaceX didn't just conduct the test. They also showcased the capabilities of their recently installed water deluge system. 
This new system introduced as a response to the significant damage incurred on the launch pad during the first test flight back in April 20 was designed to counter the formidable power of the rocket's engines. In that initial test, the force of the 33 Raptor engines was so intense that it caused extensive damage to the infrastructure, even digging a hole beneath the launch pad. Recognizing the potential risks in future launches, SpaceX implemented the Water Deluge system to combat the extreme heat and sound produced during liftoff. The system has been tested twice in the past two months, and early indications suggest it's effective in mitigating the rocket's tremendous thrust and protecting the infrastructure below. Yet the company's use of such a vast amount of water has not been without criticism. Environmentalists and local communities have voiced concerns about the potential environmental impact. The primary worry revolves around the substantial water consumption and its potential effects on the surrounding wildlife and ecosystems. I'm sure many of you are asking, when is the second launch going to happen? The space community is buzzing with anticipation, and there's growing evidence pointing to a specific time frame. Whispers within the industry and recent formal documentation hint at a launch in the not-so-distant future. In fact, a maritime notice has detailed significant preparations by SpaceX. November 1st stands out as the probable launch date. While the exact timing retains a degree of unpredictability, backup plans have been devised for each subsequent day. With just a short wait, potentially as brief as 10 days, the world might be gearing up to see the largest rocket ever soar into the skies. But there's a snag in the countdown, the all-important regulatory approval. It's almost ironic that the most advanced rocket ever built is being held up by paperwork. And it's not just fans who are feeling the frustration, Musk himself has voiced his concerns. A recent tweet of his highlights this sentiment. After the Starship launch in April, he lamented the slow speed at which U.S. fish and wildlife officials were processing SpaceX's documentation. He tweeted, It's crazy that SpaceX can build such a big rocket faster than they can review some papers. This regulatory delay isn't just a SpaceX issue. Recently, major space companies, including SpaceX and Blue Origin, took the matter to a congressional hearing, urging the FAA to expedite their review processes. They proposed that the FAA not only needs to streamline their operations, but also significantly expand their workforce, with some suggesting they should double their team members. The hope is that with these changes, we'll see a smoother path to launch approvals and witness this incredible rocket's launch before the year closes. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.